Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 61. Lesson number 61. And we are on page number 262. Please turn to it. I made a mistake here, so I'm just going to quickly fix it before I forget about it. 261. We are on page number 262. Day 3061. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Day 61. We're going to do problem number 15 and 16. Problem number 15 and 16, the last two problem, last two algebra word problems, and after that we're going to end, uh, after that we're going to end up going into geometry problems. Let's take a look at number 15. Make sure the book is in front of you. Make sure the book is in front of you, and make sure you read the problem yourself. So this is the gist of it. We are told that we have a group of people who is going to charter a group of people who is going to charter an aircraft. We are told that the cost per person will be $12 more if only 36 people go on the trip instead of the original 40. Instead of the original 40 people, if only 36 people end up going on the trip, if 4 people drop out, then everybody, the remaining 36 people, everybody in the remaining group, 36 people, will each end up paying $12 more. The question simply is, what's the total cost of chartering the aircraft? Let's find out, shall we? As always, I, as I always remind you, in algebra word problem, before you begin the solution, you must define your unknown. The unknown here is the cost of chartering the aircraft. The solution. Let, let C, let C dollar be the total cost, because that's what they're looking for, total cost of chartering the craft. The second unknown here is the cost per person if 40 were to go. Originally 40 people were planning to go and let's call that and let the small d dollar be the cost per person. I didn't want to continue there because there is there cost per person when 40 go. So those are the two unknowns. C represents the cost, total cost of chartering the aircraft, hence the emphasis on total, and D represents the cost per person if 40 people were to go as it as it was originally planned. Now we can now we can come up with our equation. So the total cost Total cost of charging the aircraft. Total cost of charging the air aircraft. When 40 people were going to go, 40 people were going to go is simply 4d times d because that's what d represents. We have defined d as the cost per person. We have defined d as the cost per person when 40 go. So 4d times d must represent the total cost of chartering the aircraft. But we are also told that if instead of 40, only 36 people go, if only 36 people go, then the cost per, cost per person is $12 more. But $12 more is $12 more, $12 more than what? $12 more than this amount, D dollars per person when 40 go. If the 40 are not going, then instead of D dollars, they will end up paying D plus 12. It's going to be $12 more. Everybody will have to fork out extra $12 to make up for the fact that there are only 36 people in the aircraft. They were supposed to be 40. Do you understand? That's it. The rest is downhill. The most difficult part in the algebra word problem is coming up with the right equation. And to make sure that you come up with the right equation, to ensure that, you must define your unknown very clearly. There should be no ambiguity about it. There should be no doubt in your mind as to what it is that you're defining as the unknown. 
it makes the work that much easier. That's it, we're done. All we have to do is solve for D. It's a very simple equation. Let's do it on the top. So 40 times D, 40 times D, 40 times D equals 36 times D plus 12. Open the parentheses, you'll end up with 40D equals 36D plus 36 times 12, which I'm going to leave it like that, okay? You'll see in a second why. If you subtract 36 from both, 36D from both sides, we'll end up with 4D equals 36 times 12. Don't waste your time multiplying it out unless you have to. Wait until the end, see what happens. Again, we need more room. Now we can divide both sides by 4. Divide this side by 4 and divide that side by 4. If you divide both sides by 4, this 4 is going to go away. And you can get rid of this 4 either with 36 or you can get rid of with 12. Doesn't really matter what you do. Uh, let's get rid of it with, with, with 12. There you go. We're done. So D equals 36 times 3. D equals 36 times 3. And how much is 36 times 3? Do you know? Don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I know what 30 times 3 is. 30 times 3 is 90. That I do know. And I also know that 6 3s are 18. I know 6 times 3 is 18. And I know 30 times 3 is 90. It stands to reason that 36 times 3 must be 90 plus 18. Now that I can handle. 90 plus 30, 18 is just 108. The cost per person must be $108 when cost per person. This implies that the cost per person must be $108 when 40 people are going. Is that what the question was asking? Was the question asking for cost per person? What is the cost per person? That's the part B. So we just answered past part B. In part A, they're asking for the total cost, which was just here. I just erased it. Total cost is simply going to be 40 times D. We know cost per person now. We have the cost per person when 40 people are going, which means the total cost, which is part A, total cost must equal 108 times 40. Let's do it out. Put a zero there for 40, right here. Four eights are 32. 32 and 4 ones are 4. Voila. $4,320 is what we had to pay to charter this aircraft when 40 people were going. And all of a sudden 4 dropped out. Now we end up paying $12 more per person. You see, $12 more per person. $12 more per person. If you add $12 to it, it will make it 52 when only 36 people are going. So what do you suppose we should get when we multiply these two figures? You see, twelve dollars each person will end up paying twelve dollars more. So forty dollars will end up paying forty-two dollars per person when only thirty-six people are going. And what do you suppose we should get when we multiply these two figures? Well, same figure as that one. It better be, because but it doesn't actually, because it, for for one thing, it's going to end up in a two. I shouldn't have gone there. Let D be the cost per person. Cost per person will be $12 more if only 36 people go. Does it say approximately? Does it say anywhere there? If 36 people go on a charter account and 40, the cost per person is greater by 12%, $12. Let's see what's going on. I'm curious now because you see, it's not the same amount because it's, this is going to end in a 2. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry 1. 6 5 the 30 plus 1 is 31. I'm just curious as to, maybe we are off by only $2, in which case that's fine. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 5 is 15. Cost per person must be... Oh, cost per person. This is wrong. This, this, 40, this, this 40 does not represent the cost per person. This is the number of people who are going in the original plan. 40 people were going to go. Cost per person is right here. This is wrong. 
the cost per person is right here, 108. And if only 36 people go, we'll end up paying $12 more per person. We'll end up paying $120. And 120 times 36 is going to be the same as this amount. 36 times 0 is 0, 36 times 2 is 72, so 2 carry 7, 36 times 1 is 36, 36 plus 7, 36 plus 7 is going to be 36 plus 4 is 40, so it's 43. Well, this agrees. That was wrong. I, I, I came up with 52 because I thought $40 was the cost per person. I wasn't paying attention. Cost per person is 108. 40 is the number of people. See, when the figures, I knew the figures were not going to agree because this ends in a zero and this is going to end up in a two. Because six times two is 12. So I thought maybe it's an approximation and maybe they were off, we're going to be off by two dollars. But when we're off by so much amount, obviously something has gone wrong. Let's do problem 16. Problem number 16. Problem number 16. We need the room, obviously. Problem number 16 says... On the same page, it says we bought C and take chairs. Does it actually say C in the book? It says an antique dealer bought C and take chairs. Okay, C is the number of chairs. C for the chairs. You understand? We bought C and take chairs. For a total of x dollars. Again, does it actually say that in the problem? Yes, it does. It just say, it says the dealer bought C and take chairs for x dollars. The reason I checked is because if C was the variable that I introduced in my work, I define it C some as, as being something, then we must explain to the reader that C is, C is going to represent that. We cannot just throw it out of, out of nowhere. We, we cannot just introduce something out of nowhere, a variable. We must, we must introduce it properly. We must spell it out. But it's not something we are introducing. It's in the problem. So, if we bought C and tick chair for a total of X dollars, that must imply that the cost per chair, cost per chair, must be the X dollars that we are paying divided by the C. This is the cost per chair. It goes on to say that we sold it, we sold each one of this chair for Y dollars each. Y dollars each. And now the question is, what is the profit per chair? Which is the part B. Profit per chair. Well, this Profit per chair, let's continue here, profit per chair must, must obviously be the selling price minus the cost per chair. What we are selling it for and what it cost us. Well, it's right here. We are selling it for Y dollars and it costs us this amount per chair, X, minus, X divided by C. Why X divided by C? because we paid a total of X dollars for C chairs. So if I paid a total of $80 for four chairs, how much did I pay per chair? 80 divided by four. So if I paid X dollars for total for, for all the chairs, and there were C number of chairs, then cost per chair, cost to me per chair as a dealer, must have been X divided by C. And I turn around and sell each one of them for Y dollars. So my profit my profit per chair, our profit per chair was y minus this amount, y minus c over x, x over c rather. The next question says, what is our total profit? Let's do it on the top. What was the guy's total profit? What was the guy's total profit? Well, total profit is simply equals profit per chair times the number of chairs we sold, times the number of chairs we sold, or the dealer sold. Do you understand? Right here is the profit per chair. Profit per chair is right here. It is simply the selling price of the chair, selling pri price per chair, 
minus the cost per chair. This is what it's costing us, this is what it sold it for. And how many did we sell? Well, we sold three chairs. We sold three chairs. We can leave it like this in a row form or we can expand it. We need, in order for us to expand it, we need room. Let's continue. So, if you open the parentheses, if you're going to expand it, it's going to be C times Y, C times Y minus C times this amount, C times X over C. One more time, one more time, C times Y, which is right here, C times Y minus C times X over C, C times X over C, C is going to cancel out. And therefore, the total profit is simply C times Y minus X. Let's call it P for the profit. There we go. Which makes perfect sense. If you think about it, which makes perfect sense because total profit should equal the, the price for each chair, the price, the, the total profit, C represents the number of chairs we sold. This is the price per chair. So listen carefully. C represents, C represents the number of chairs we sold. And this is the price per chair. So price per chair, price per chair, minus the total number, uh, times the total number of chair, is what we refer to in economics. The proper terminology for it is total revenue. Total revenue simply means how much total money did we get? Minus, minus, X represents the total cost. Total cost of all the chairs. Total revenue minus total cost must represent the profit. Which is exactly what it is here. Profit is equal to, profit is always equal to, the total revenue, the total amount of money that you get as a merchant for doing something, minus the total cost of that endeavor. So whatever the total cost was, we take it away, and whatever is left over is what you made. And if it turns out that the total cost was more than what you got for everything that you did, then you, were, then you had a loss. You had a negative profit, you had a loss. On that note, on that philosophical note that is, and I know it was philosophical, and how do I know that? Because I say so myself. I say so myself. On that note, we're going to end this video. Tomorrow, in the next video, we'll begin with question number 17, where we're going to jump into geometry problems. All right? We are done with the algebra word problems. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.